Major breaking news this hour as Ukrainian government leaders say the Russian invasion has begun. And just a few minutes ago, for the second time this hour, we have heard air raid sirens, loud sirens, here in Lviv. This is in the west of the country. Uh, they persisted for some time and from multiple parts of the city. They've only just ended. That's twice this hour. And uh, one of our local producers uh, messaged me just now and said that uh, uh, on the local television, government officials are asking people to turn off the lights, gather their documents and take cover. Also asking people not to panic. A, a pretty tall order as what we're seeing unfold around this country continues. OK, now an advisor to the Interior Minister is reporting missile strikes in the capital, Kiev, the shelling of airfields and military headquarters in Kharkiv and Russian troops landing in the Ukrainian port city of Odessa. Now, CNN has obtained video from Ukrainian border guards, which also shows a column of military vehicles entering the country from Belarus. That is to the north of the country and a pretty quick shot to Kyiv from there. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have been conducting military drills in Belarus, of course, for several weeks and just never left when those drills were over. CNN correspondents in Kyiv and cities throughout Ukraine are reporting multiple explosions. CNN's Matthew Chance was on air just a few hours ago when this happened. Oh, I tell you what, I just heard a big bang right here behind me. I thought we shouldn't have done the live shot here. There are big explosions taking place in Kiev right now. Um, I can't see where they're taking place from this vantage point here on top of the roof of the hotel in central Kiev. And I can't explain what they are, but I heard four or five explosions a few moments ago. I don't know whether our viewers or whether you in the studio there could hear uh, what, we could what, hear it, Matthew. what I just heard. You could, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I will tell you that the United States has warned... Was that another uh, one? ...the Ukrainians. Yeah, I mean, I think it was. Now, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, is calling this a, quote, special military operation to protect Donbass. It is clearly bigger than that. Now, he made a surprise appearance on state television calling for the demilitarization of Ukraine, blaming the government in Kyiv for bloodshed, but said Russian forces are not planning an occupation. Whoever tries to interfere with us, and even more so to create threats for our country, our people should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead you to such consequences that you have never experienced in your history. Now, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, he went on Facebook again to address the nation. He says he's imposing martial law but urged the country not to panic. Today, each of you should stay calm. Stay at home if you can. We are working. The army is working. The whole sector of defense and security is working. No panic. We are strong. We are ready for everything. We will win over everybody because we are Ukraine. All right, we are covering this from all angles. We've got CNN's Fred Plykin. He's in Russia's Belgrade region. Nick Peyton Walsh is in the Ukrainian port city of Odessa. Jill Doherty in Moscow. Atika Schubert here in Lviv with me. And Kevin Liptak in Washington. Uh, all right, uh, let, let's start first of all uh, uh, with um, you, Kevin. I want to hear what Washington is saying about this and what they will say going forward. Well, we've just heard that President Biden has spoken to President Zelensky. They got on the phone uh, just before midnight Washington time, uh, the president calling him about 90 minutes after uh, we first heard those explosions in Kiev. Uh, the president saying that Zelensky reached out to him. Uh, the president saying he condemned this unprovoked and unjustified attack. And the president, President Biden, saying that President Zelensky uh, asked him to call on the leaders of the world to speak out clearly against President Putin's flagrant or Aggression and to stand with the people of Ukraine. And so this is sort of kicking off uh, this wave of reaction uh, from the United States. We do expect uh, President Biden to get on a virtual call with members of the G7 tomorrow mid-morning uh, Washington time. That is where the leaders uh, we expect will uh, discuss potential sanctions uh, that they will impose on Moscow for what it's doing tonight, uh, what it has begun tonight. And then we expect to hear from the president uh, midday tomorrow Washington time. And that 
is when we expect him to uh, lay out these sanctions uh, that the U.S. plans to impose. And we're hearing uh, tonight from officials that this is going to be the full package. This are, these are the uh, swift and severe sanctions that the president uh, has been promising for some time. Uh, we expect that to include export controls. Uh, restrictions on uh, certain technologies that can be imported into Russia. We also expect the president to announce sanctions on uh, additional financial institutions and on additional members of Vladimir Putin's inner circle. And so uh, this has been what the president has been warning about really for months. Uh, he applied those uh, limited sanctions are earlier in this week, but he promised at that point that if Russia escalated, he would escalate as well. And so that is what we expect to hear from the president tomorrow. But tonight, uh, we're told that the president is huddling uh, with members of his national security team, obviously keeping a very close eye on this. Uh, something we should note, the president, of course, had hoped that these uh, sanctions would be a deterrent. Uh, it's clear tonight that the deterrent didn't work out. The president said in a statement that uh, Jill, the first lady, Jill Biden, and I are praying uh, for the brave and proud people of Ukraine. Michael. Kevin Liptak, thanks so much. Let's go to Fred Plykin in the Belgorod region of Russia and give us a sense of what's going on on the ground where you are, Fred. Hi there, Michael. Well, the Belgorod uh, region is, of course, uh, right across from the border from Kharkiv, which apparently was one of the main targets uh, of some of the fire that's been coming from here from the Russian side. Of course, Kiev also as well. And what we witnessed when this operation started, right around the time when you know, we just saw Matthew Chance there, started hearing those impacts in Kiev, is that we started hearing a lot of outgoing fire coming here from Belgorod. We've been reporting about it over the past couple of weeks, that the Russians have been amassing forces here, which uh, you know, saw a lot of armor pour into the region, but apparently also amassing artillery here and also some longer distance rockets as well. One of our uh, producers, Ulyana Pavlova, she actually saw some of those rocket salvos being fired towards Ukrainian territory, and we heard it several times. We also heard uh, what we believe were larger rockets uh, that um, uh, may have been launched as well. Of course, one of the things, Michael, that we've been talking about is that the Russians had also brought the Iskander M uh, uh, mid medium range missile system into this area and other areas close to Ukraine as well. That has a very long range, is a very powerful and also a very dangerous weapon as well. So it certainly appears as though Belgorod, where I am right now, is one of the main hubs that the Russians are using to launch these attacks. But on the other hand, it's also become clear uh, throughout the night, as we've been reporting, that this is an extremely widespread attack. You were talking about it. There was that CCTV video of uh, troops crossing the border on a border crossing between Russia, uh, between uh, uh, Ukraine and, and Belarus. That was one of the things that had always been hanging in the air, whether or not Russian forces would also invade Belarus. I was actually at exercises last week in Belarus with the Russian and Belarusian militaries where I asked Belarusian strongman Alexander Lukashenko uh, about the possibility of that happening, and he laughed it off. He said, do you really believe that we're going to invade Ukraine from Belarus? Well, now it certainly appears as though that does seem to be happening. As far as uh, some of those other possible ground invasions, we don't have confirmation uh, yet about where Russian forces may have also crossed the border. But one thing I can tell you, Michael, is from having been in this region, really having gone down from uh, the south near Donetsk, all the way up to here to uh, north of Ukraine, to Belgorod, we did see some encampments that we saw that appeared to be Russian special forces, which would no doubt be the first ones that would go on uh, if, uh, if there was a larger ground invasion. Certainly one of the other things that, for instance, our, our Jim Shudo is reporting, the U.S. believes that airstrikes could be used to try and soften up the battlefield to then obviously make it easier for Russian forces to invade. But... By and large, what we see is this is a large-scale operation, a widespread operation, and certainly one that's being carried out by a lot of Russian forces with a lot of firepower, Michael.